Uh, welcome everybody to my talk on uh, immutable systems in, uh, uh, in the cloud. So, okay, just a glitch. So, that was funny. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> okay, just cut the ice. <laughs> So let me tell you a story. Uh, so this is the, this represents this diagram represents uh, the usual development and deployment workflow that all of us are uh, used to use in our daily job. So uh, we start with uh, with a team who develops stuff, uh, either automation or code for your application, whatever. Then you run maybe Vagrant, Docker, whatever you want uh, to run uh, unit tests in your uh, laptop, and then uh, you share what you have done on uh, repository, Gen Jenkins kicks in, run tests, uh, and eventually you deploy stuff uh, to pre-production environment or to live. Okay, why are you telling you this? I'm, uh, a, uh, I've been working on uh, uh, automation projects, uh, um, especially on uh, um, OpenStack, uh, Rackspace, uh, AWS Cloud. Now I work at, uh, at Microsoft, and I always use uh, Linux uh, and Python-based uh, framework. What are we going to discuss today? We are going to discuss uh, configuration management, because that is what I, what I do, and it's really useful for all of us. Containers and microservices. There is, I'm supposed to say containers, Docker, at least once in, uh, in my talk, so take that. <laughs> Orchestration. Orchestration is uh, absolutely. We are. We need to discuss that and uh, CI/CD because obviously that's the way, right way to to do things nowadays. Why I'm uh, talking about these kind of things? So I'm pretty sure if you are here, you don't use uh, the old-fashioned uh, uh, way of managing server. You are not supposed to SSH in uh, into uh, any uh, server. You don't care about servers. You don't treat them as snowflakes. They are just servers. Instead, what you are supposed to do is to uh, write some sort of playbook uh, which allows you to manage systems, to tell systems how they should uh, manage themselves. And that is awesome because uh, you might use different technologies like Chef, uh, Puppet, Soulstack, uh, Ansible, whatever you want. Uh, to, to tell systems how to manage themselves. So you develop playbook, uh, uh, your automation uh, on your laptop, uh, you share things on uh, Git repositories, uh, and then when you are happy with that, uh, you push uh, those uh, um, playbook, uh, the run books, to a chef, puppet, source service. That's great. So essentially what you are doing is you write once uh, and you reuse uh, what you have developed in all environments, meaning on your laptop, on virtual, physical, bare metal servers, in different cloud that you might want to use. Okay, that's great. So, what happens is that if you drill down a bit, you realize that it's not that easy. So, you started managing uh, virtual, physical, cloud servers, uh, and you end up managing such a mess, that complexity. Bunch of stuff, uh, old groups, attributes, uh, uh, all kind of things that allow you to manage systems uh, in, uh, in the cloud. So essentially, you are dealing with a meta infrastructure. <coughs> you are supposed to manage your infrastructure, and you end up managing two infrastructures. One which manages the other. So you are investing time, money, resources in doing something that you would be much happier not to do. If you want to use, uh, say, Puppet, uh, it may seem a little bit easier, but you need to take into account uh, that if you want to compare apples with apples, uh, you need to add, uh, say, RTNK, Hira, and additional components uh, to to manage your infrastructure as uh, Chef allows you to do. So eventually, it really swings around about it. Everything evens out. So it's uh, 
the problem here is uh, about managing complicated environments and you don't want to manage complex environments. So the difference between the two is, uh, is much about uh, things when uh, uh, you know what the initial state is. From the initial state, uh, you might be able to predict uh, what the outcome is. The outcome is uh, your project spec. You want to reach a goal. With a complex infrastructure, you know where you are, but you don't really know where you are going to. And that's the difference between managing complicated systems and complex systems. So essentially, you need to find a way to keep things simple, to version things, and to make things be repeatable. OK. Back to the point. You are supposed to manage your infrastructure to uh, uh, manage uh, on-prem servers, uh, cloud servers, uh, virtual servers, uh, with roles uh, with different groups of, of servers. And I'm pretty sure somebody might think that containers are the way to go. Unfortunately, when it comes to adopting containers uh, or adopting the microservice uh, pattern, the problem is that uh, you might need to redesign big chunks of your infrastructure just to, just to adopt those new tools. So it might be awesome for certain companies. So if you work at Google, Netflix, uh, eBay, absolutely. You have tons of engineers who are able to deal with new things. But for most of companies I supported in the latest years, that wasn't really the case. So containers and metro services are awesome. OK, for now, I might suggest you to consolidate what you are currently doing. As always, uh, uh, the truth lies uh, in, uh, in between. So you need to find a way to, uh, to, uh, to leverage what you already have in a better way, in a smarter way. So what could be a possible solution? Back to the point. This is uh, the development and uh, deployment workflow that we discussed at the very beginning. What if, at the end of this uh, workflow, we create uh, an image? So, you already do what you are familiar with, you continue doing what uh, you are currently doing, but at the very end, instead of running Chef Puppet Ansible against uh, um, uh, um, cloud servers at runtime, what if you just take an image of what you produced? So the idea behind this is uh, you start with, uh, with a vanilla image, you customize and install up, and that is uh, where you reuse what you are already familiar with. So you might have playbook, cookbooks, uh, manifest file, which allows you to provision stuff on your servers. OK, that's great. You are already done, almost there. So just reuse what you have to customize and install your app on those servers. Then you run tests, and you take an MI image, which can be an MI image in AWS, an image in OpenStack or Rackspace Cloud, or an image of a virtual server in Azure, whatever you want. It applies to pretty much all cloud servers. And then you reuse that image, to, you, you store that image, you version it, you tag it, so that you're able to reuse that image in different environments. As always, if it's missing, it cannot break. So get rid of complexity. Get rid of configuration management at runtime in production, where you, every second counts. Let's discuss a very trivial issue. Say that you are managing your scaling group in AWS. So at one time, iLoad hits your um, front-end web servers. You need to scale out. And you need to provision those servers at one time. Every second counts. Let's say that uh, the package that you are supposed to install is missing because uh, you are leveraging, say, a PPA, and uh, the package maintainer just removed that version because it's obsolete. OK, so you are scaling up, and uh, you have a new scale server 
which she is able to do nothing because it doesn't converge. It's not able to install a missing independence. So, what's next? Okay, that, that is uh, quite easy to fix. You might think, uh, okay, we are in AWS, let's use uh, S3, and I can just uh, store that package in S3, and then I point my AC2 instance uh, to fetch that package from S3. But that's another issue. You have just started managing packages on the maintainer's behalf in S3. So you just moved your problem from initial issue to another. So that's not really what you want to do. You want to develop stuff. You want to manage infrastructure, not to do someone else's job. How can you solve it? Phoenix servers. What is the definition of a Phoenix server? If it doesn't work, nuke it and reprovision it from scratch. That's the definition of a, sorry, <laughs> of a Phoenix server. So a Phoenix server is a disposable server which allows you to nuke it if it doesn't work or just leave it live if it works just fine. You need to bake the EC2 image, the AMI image. How can you do it? Just grab your uh, Linux distro of choice, do stuff, so install application, run tests, whatever you want. At the very end, you just export it as uh, AMI. Then you tag it, and you store it in, uh, in a bucket. If you want to use that AMI image for your EC2 instances, you just need to uh, Sorry, I'm struggling with this. <laughs> uh, you just need to pick it up from your S3 bucket. You just need to, uh, you, you remember, you tagged that uh, AMI image. So you just need to take care of picking it up with the right tag. And you can uh, spin an EC2 instance up based off that AMI. And you're ready to go. So, if you paid attention to what I just said, uh, you might have spotted that there is an issue here. Because uh, you are using the same AMI in different environments. But, sorry? Uh, and uh, different environments require different configuration. So, if you're using the same AI image in uh, development, staging, pre-production, production, you might want to use, to point it to different uh, DSN databases uh, or Whatever. So you need to leverage some sort of discovery service. So spin it up in different environment and point to, and let it discover what is the right configuration for that uh, environment. Or you can uh, update uh, that, that image at runtime with two different uh, strategies. One programmatically with uh, is always Ansible, Chef, Puppet, again, but you are using now configuration management system as a smart way, not just with brute force, running those over and over again, every 30 minutes again, service. Or you can just, in time, uh, reconfigure those instances with a console or whatever technology tool to you like. Implementation. Let's discuss about how you can achieve that goal. You need to spin a vanilla EC2 instance up. You need to configure and deploy your application, export an MI, and tear everything down to reduce costs. That is what you need to do. So in four steps, you are good to go. This presentation is based off a project I, I worked on recently, and I streamlined the playbook that I used, and it's available on GitHub. So feel free to give it a go to start cracking on, uh, on that. So to spin a vanilla AC2 instance up, you can, might leverage this uh, YAML uh, playbook, which allows you, so this is a beef or tofu if you're a vegetarian. And uh, essentially what you need to do is just to add a new instance in, uh, in uh, EC2 then uh, uh, you just need to wait for that EC2 instance to be properly spun up. Obviously, it takes some time, maybe just seconds, but you just need to wait before proceeding further. Then you need to configure and deploy stuff there. Let's say for the time being, we just 
install Apache just for the sake of this, uh, this talk. But you can expand on that. You can really add whatever complexity, level of comple complexity you want uh, to, to this. As soon as uh, your configuration management system has converged, you have a fully working server running in the cloud. So you are ready to take an image, you can create an AMI and tear everything down to reduce costs, which is performed by this, uh, this part. So essentially you just need to specify the region where you want to store the AMI in and uh, just name it. And by naming it, I mean uh, you can use a naming schema of your, uh, that you are creating with, the, with your team and add uh, uh, AWS tags to that. And terminate the instance uh, that you previously launched. So the CI-CD workflow works like this. So you have a EC2 um, an AMI image based off the EC2 instance that you provisioned. You tagged that uh, AMI and you can reuse that in uh, dev, run tests. If everything is fine, you can promote it to UAT. Again, additional tests, promote to pre-production environment, test again before going live, and when you're happy, you can promote it to live uh, eventually. So, just to recap what you, can, uh, you are supposed to do to, to achieve this goal. You just write uh, your implementation, which allows you to provision that server to run uh, your application. You can store those runbook on uh, GitHub repository, then uh, let Jenkins uh, uh, kick in. Uh, feed Ansible with uh, some sort of YAML uh, uh, playbook. Pick a uh, Linux distribution of your choice. Create the AMI, uh, tag it, version it, uh, store it in a, in a bucket, and spin EC2 instances based off that, uh, that AMI. And you're ready to go uh, to to promote that image throughout all environments uh, that you are supposed to manage. Lesson learned. I've been working with, I think, pretty much all uh, configuration management systems. Ansible is the only way to go with uh, uh, if you want to keep things simple. Courses for courses. There is no one tool which allows you to do all things uh, in, uh, in the right way. So just use what you are familiar with and consolidate what you are doing. Use the right configuration management system and CICD pipelines the right way and version and test all the things. If it doesn't work, nuke it and reprovision it from scratch. That's the easiest and safer way to do. Thank you very much, guys. That was, uh, that was my slide deck, and uh, you can reach out to me on uh, uh, Twitter or by email, or feel free to come talk to me today, this time, or any break time. Okay. Hello, thank you for your uh, great presentation and I have uh, a couple of questions. First one is uh, what are the advantages uh, of your uh, way and doing that with Pucker? Doing it, sorry? Pucker. Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. sure. It's uh, uh, the other tool by Ashcroft. Ash As I said, uh, so I, I used Packer um, uh, um, previously for another project. As I said, I, I like to keep things simple. So if you want to use Packer, eventually you need to write some sort of uh, run book to, uh, to provision uh, your machine. Uh, same thing, you doing a uh, YAML based uh, bit that then run Ansible uh, with Packer. Yeah, that's correct. So if you use uh, Packer, you need to use two tools. Packer plus uh, the configuration management system to provision stuff. With Ansible, you can achieve the same goal with just one. Okay. That yeah. was my, my point. I use Packer and it's awesome. I really like it, but just uh, a tool that you can ditch. 
Okay, got it. Uh, thank you. Uh, the uh, next question is a tougher. Uh, what if we exclude these uh, instances and, for instance, uh, use callback in Jenkins to mm -hmm. do the stuff when we are actually spinning up uh, a new instance with Ansible? Okay, so I'm not sure if I got it correctly. You are saying you would spin an EC2 instance up and then use Jenkins to provision those EC2 instances? Yeah, exactly. If we uh, include, uh, for instance, uh, into our metadata instance, our, actually our launch group instance, uh, a callback to our Jenkins to actually configure and, uh, I don't know, adopt our uh, instance for ready-to-use state and test it and doing stuff like that. Yeah, what sure. do you think about that? I think that would, could work. Why not? Uh, Is it a better I mean, way uh, to do this stuff uh, than uh, package and images? Uh, ah, okay. So you would leverage those uh, uh, that that approach to to to, to provision systems at runtime. So essentially, you you are just using Jenkins as a configuration management system. So you would use Jenkins instead of Chef Server or Puppet Server. Uh, not really. Uh, we can reuse in Chef and Puppet uh, mm -hmm. to actually uh, configure our instance, but we do not mess with all these pre-built IMIs. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's a different approach. <coughs> I would like to have everything in place when, uh, when it comes to managing production environment. I don't want to uh, build and provision systems at runtime. Okay. That is... Uh, that is my experience. I just wanted to, to share my experience, which is uh, uh, just keep things simple. When you need uh, an instance and start running, just leverage an AMI which is already available, and there are no, no questions. It works. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, and. Uh, uh, can, can, can you switch uh, slides with the uh, workflow of deployment with GitHub? Uh, this one? Back, back, please. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah? Yes. Um, this uh, workflow can be implemented with Docker. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Why not Docker? This not no vendor lock with Amazon. No, uh, no any dependencies. No Ansible. You you can uh, run anything on build time. You have uh, uh, only on file system. You reduce uh, usage uh, for space. Why not Docker? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. So, uh, do you want the short answer or the long one? So, the short answer well. is, uh, if you use uh, Docker that way, you are yeah. just using Docker to replace virtual machines. No, no. Docker is no replace virtual machines. Do Docker, Docker can run on all, uh, all virtual machines, on physical servers, on bare metal. <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, if you, I'm sorry, no, uh, I, your, your, your images uh, uh, is, uh, uh, works on your application is absolutely stateless, yes? Uh, so, I'm not talking about uh, containers uh, or purpose, or, or honestly. Uh, containers are awesome, I, I like that. What I'm saying is that uh, if you work in, uh, in uh, already well-established team, you might already have uh, cookbooks, uh, manifests, or playbooks uh, already there, and they are already developed, and they work smoothly. I'm not talking about uh, somebody who start from scratch. Okay. So if you already have something, you might want to consolidate your infrastructure. And to consolidate your infrastructure, the only way to amend the minimal number of changes uh, is to adopt uh, EMIs. If you want to use something completely different and to, to adopt a new mindset and way of doing things, containers are the way to go. Uh, okay, uh, when, um, re really, it, it's, it's right. Uh, but uh, when you application on inside the EMI, 
uh, is uh, has a state. Yeah. Uh, you can change it on the fly by image re reinstalling no, 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 no. Uh, by instance relaunching. This state will will be less. Oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, um, I I guess state uh, on S S three on or another place. Yes, on the. Uh, uh, I think I, I, I I'm lost. <laughs> we might take things offline. Maybe it's uh, it's it's easier. <laughs> uh, uh, state for application is, uh, I guess, uh, in your case, a state on this application uh, is uh, split on the image, yes? Is, is right? It's a state of the application. What, what do you mean by yeah. that? Like logs. Uh, external storage. External storage. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I'm lost, but <laughs> we can take that offline. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, actually, I think that uh, this is a really nice way to uh, get the Docker thing to the uh, uh, like the legacy infrastructure, uh, and it's 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 nice nice, nice way to do it, and. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, what if I'm st I start in uh, something new? Some, uh, I'm uh, looking into uh, ways that are there to implement my infra infrastructure. Yeah. And are there some advantages uh, of the, this way uh, uh, comparing to Docker or more modern ways. But when I uh, should choose this way uh, from the start? So I would suggest you to, to adopt this uh, approach when it comes to uh, uh, to reusing what you already have available in-house. So if you already have playbooks, manifests and cookbooks already available, then that's the easiest way to get those uh, uh, automation. No, but if you are running from scratch, if you are starting from scratch, uh, nothing really prevents you from using Docker. I would honestly go with, uh, with that. Yeah, it really depends on what 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 is your goal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think about salt stack? Uh, have you tried it? No, I I've heard many awesome things about salt stack, but I never um, gave it a try. It's only one missing one, okay. apart from Sims and Jim, but nobody likes it. <laughs> okay, and uh, one last question for me. Uh, how big is your production that handled by uh, all this thing? Mm -hmm. Sorry. How, how, how many uh, instances do you uh, have in your production systems that are handled by right this now. process? You, you mean the um, chef and packet infrastructure or the real oh, system? Oh, oh. A real system that is uh, managed by this. How ah. many not? Okay, so we are talking about tens of machines. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, thank you. Uh, we have uh, additional break. And. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.